The S&P put in a new first again in 2023. This one is for the bulls breaking above the bear market downtrend on the log scale as well as the linear scale. But we do have some overhead resistance coming and you may have noticed that I've been extremely bullish on the channel for many, many months. The pattern is very clear at the moment, but there is always the possibility of the downside. So in this video, let's look at what is happening for the S&P this month of January, the trifecta that is coming together. What does that mean for the next 11 months of 2023? What can we expect from the markets? And where could we be getting trapped in this short term for the S&P and of course, Bitcoin as well? If you haven't already, smash up the like, subscribe, bell notification icon, all of the drills, links in the top of the video description for everything that I'm talking about in today's video, like the TIA GAN swing indicator. Let's dive into today's video and I hope you are having a fantastic weekend or start to your weekend as well. The first thing that I want to have a look at is something that is getting a little confusing out there for some people. This is purely TA looking at a head and shoulders pattern and I've seen this being called a lot. So I want to just squash this quite quickly as this is not a typical traditional head and shoulders pattern. Head and shoulders form at the bottoms and the tops. They are much stronger signals. So if I invert this chart so you can see what I'm talking about here, you can see that we've got a nice clean shoulder, a nice clean head and another clean shoulder. Once the neckline is broken, well, all bets are on for the direction of the trend. Now, of course, this is inverted, which means if we put it back to the exact way that we're looking, that's a clear inverted head and shoulders, which is obviously bullish. It's not confirmed yet. We do have some overhead resistance coming up at 4,100 points. So that's all I wanted to say on the head and shoulders pattern just so that we can put that one to bed and people do not get wrecked trying to short this market to massive downside. But there is the possibility of some overhead resistance coming up. So to make it nice and clear before we get into the January and February data, what to expect for this year and that trifecta coming together to give us a clearer signal for 2023, what I'm anticipating is a potential rejection at this point. Now, if the rejection doesn't come, that is an extremely bullish sign. If we break through that and form support and consolidate above that 4150 level, that is very, very bullish. But if we do get rejected, it's not to worry because we still have a lot of underside support coming in here, in particular at this major 50% level, 3,500. And then some of these swing lows, these major points that I put on the chart here at around 3,800. And then again, this, this June low at around 3,600 points as well. So there's some major support levels to the downside if this resistance hits and we do get a pullback. Now, I've talked about a pullback potentially happening in February and March, which we'll have a look at in some of the data uh, moving forward as well. There's a lot of interesting stuff here coming together with February and the historical data there. But going back to the S&P and where we are currently uh, at this point, that can still happen in my books for a short-term bear because there is clear resistance above. But looking towards 2024 to 5, 6, I'm still in a macro bull. There is no signals to say that the macro bull is off because we have higher lows forming on the macro scale. There's your low, there's your high, and currently it's a higher low. That is a macro bull, technically speaking, not just my opinion based on what we're seeing on the chart. That is how a macro bull is formed. Nothing has changed yet to put that out of play. And so far, we're looking like we could be heading up. This particular break of this level here, 4,100 points, is really going to push a lot of bullish momentum back to the bulls and take it away from the bears from this downside. Now, the VIX is a very handy chart to continue to follow. It has pointed out many of the market bottoms, especially at these extreme peaks of the VIX. So this is essentially just the volatility index, how volatile a market is. And what tends to happen is once we go on our spike peaks of the VIX, which are essentially very correlated to the market bottoms like we saw in 2020 
And then again, we could basically go back to any of these. We've got February 18, right around those uh, significant bottom levels. You can go back here, 2018, very significant bottom. What tends to happen is the market will fade off into lower volatility and then find its base around 11 to 16 on the volatility index. And what we're seeing over the course of January is a break to new lows on the volatility, which spells higher prices when we look at the historic data of the entire volatility index uh, across with the S&P 500. So we're starting to see the volatility drop while the S&P continues to climb. So this is also another bullish signal just based on the history that we have with these two charts. And so uh, with January, we've also started to break uh, a lot of the monthly market bottoms here on the index, and we're continuing to climb or drop towards that 17 to 11 reading on this index. Now, of course, we could find some support and then bounce from this level. And that, of course, would then mean that we start to get a drop off on the S&P. And that might time in well with our February or March type of bottom that we're looking for. But it's really going to depend on where that peak is, because we can see September 2021 had a very, very small peak. And what happened in uh, September of 2021 here is this particular little bottom. So we had this September reading as the market dropped. We had that small bottom there into October with uh, the end of September also having a red period. And then the market took off into that next peak. So it's really going to depend on the magnitude of that volatility spike. And should we only see a small spike here like we've done in the past, maybe that's all that's needed just to give us that next low potentially in February or March. And so if this, as I said, continues to drop and continue to trade around 11 to 17, that is going to be more fuel to the bullish fire. So it's about this time in the video where the bears get a little agitated with the amount of bullish data that is coming out from the markets, what the smart money is giving us in the way of the price chart, in the way of the VIX, and some of the other data, which I'll get to in just a moment as well. And so if that is you and you're finding yourself getting a little agitated, the main areas that we are looking for a breakdown for the bears to take control again is the first area being that December low, which is what we have marked out on the chart here. If that can break down and we start to form a higher low, the bears have more control again to tackle the next major support level, which is currently the cycle low back in October of 2022. So until those levels happen, we have to use what is given to us in the charts the data here on the price chart, the data in terms of the VIX, and of course, the data that we're about to look at in terms of the election year or the pre-election year coming up in 2023. You may recall a video we did nearly two weeks ago looking at a set of data points coming in for January to give us a indication of what we could expect in 2023. Basically, the pre-election year uh, leading up to the election in the in the following year. Now, there are three indicators here, which is why it's called a trifecta. And this is put together by Almanac Trader. And it's an interesting one to follow as the hit rate is extremely high. Nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is 100%. But the, extreme, uh, the hit rate within these cycles is very high. And we're coming towards the end of the month now with the data leaning towards this trifecta being hit. So the first was a Santa Claus rally and we had a positive return. It wasn't huge, but it was still positive. The next was a five, first five days in January. Basically, that was also positive. Looking at the S&P, what happened in those uh, first five days of January, it was all up. So that was hit. The third that we're looking for is a positive month of January. And so far, it doesn't look like January is going to fall below the low that it, that it has hit in January. It's got a long way to fall from 4,070 points back to the low of 37.94. So if we're to remain at these levels for the next basically two trading days, which start next week, that is going to hit this trifecta, meaning that it was almost nine times out of 10, the market ends up at the end of the year. Couple this 
with the election year or the pre-election year, which is 2023, this also adds more strength to it. And then another indicator that adds more bullish strength to this is that we have a positive trifecta. So these three uh, uh, data points being met after a prior year bear market. And we can all agree on 2022 being a bear market. So there are a lot of signals coming together for the end of January to showcase what we could expect in 2023. Now, these are trading days at the bottom here, not the date of the month, just to be clear on that. So this is January market performance. And the lines that we're interested in are the S&P 500 and the DJIA. None of the rest uh, except for the 2023 results here in the dotted lines. So the green and the black. And so far, the green is finishing up positive. The dotted black is also climbing again. But of course, the DJI has been higher than the S&P as well. So that's an interesting uh, point to note. And then looking back on the cycles, the S&P 500 and the DJI are these green lines at the bottom here. So this is for all of the cycles there. So this year is actually closing higher than what has happened in the past. So that naturally leads us on to ask, well, what happens in February? So pre-election year February since 1950, we have 12 times up, six times down. So the DJI is the same thing, 12 times up, six times down. So two thirds of the time, February ends up in a pre-election year. This is just having a look forward to the month of February. February, could we expect a green month or a red month? Well, in this case, 66% will get a green month, 33% will end up with a red month. That's not going to be the end of the world because we're looking forward to the end of 2023. So the main thing that I would take from this, and this is my own personal opinion and how I would invest, is if I do see a dip, then that is going to be my opportunity to buy, depending on which markets I'm in, of course. But if I'm getting a op an opportunity, if we do get this dip in February or March, with that trifecta met, there is more possibility that 2023 is going to end up, which we've also covered for many months now on the channel. And so those dip opportunities are essentially the old buy the dip opportunities. So how exactly could February look? Well, looking at the cycle data going back uh, the recent 21 years and then pre-election years back to 1950. Again, we're interested in black and green and also the dotted lines of black and green to give us a more macro view of the market. But of course, you could also add in here NASDAQ if you were interested in trading the NASDAQ. Now, the dotted years are the pre-election years. So black, green, and why not look at the blue at the same time? Black and green ended up at the end of February, but in other years, the, the black and the green lines have all ended down or near on uh, where they started the month of February. So this is just looking at February. Pre-election years, again, black and green. And if you want to look at the NASDAQ blue here, you've got the dotted blue line ended up in February. Pre-election years, that is this year. That's the NASDAQ. And then you have green and black also ending up slightly higher than the point they opened. Now, it is interesting to note that we will potentially trend up into the middle of the month. So you can see day, uh, trading day 10, not the 10th of February, but the trading day 10, 11, and 12, and then a small drop off into the end of that month. There is a lot to be bullish on, but there could be some short term traps forming. We've looked at the January trifecta, we've looked at the technicals on the charts of the SP coming together with the VIX, the volatility index, and then also what we may be able to expect for February. And of course, within that, there could be a trap forming. We have plenty of overhead resistance forming, and this is going to depend on your timeframes. How short are you trading the market or how long? What, what long-term timeframe are you looking at here? So the resistance could be the trap that we are anticipating for the market to have a correction into that later part of February. Now that might be a lot to take in as we've covered cycles for the month of January, the trifecta, meaning the cycles for 2023, and then a look into February along with technicals like an inverse head and shoulders pattern along with major support levels in case we do see a trap form as the market looks to peak 
and then break down in the short term. So trying to put all this together in a short term outlook for the end of January into February and then keeping a broader macro picture uh, ahead for the coming years. So they're going to be key indicators moving forward over the next couple of months, especially into this later half of quarter one. But of course, the macro cycles are still looking up. We don't have anything to say otherwise, and this could lead us all the way into that peak around 2026. As always, links are in the top of the video description, but it is our two year anniversary of the Investor Accelerator. This is where our members find out how we trade the markets, crypto, stock markets, and our real estate portfolios. So being that it's our birthday special, we will have a special sale coming out this weekend. So sign up to the link in the top of the video description so you can stay ahead of the market like we do here on the channel and with our members. I'll see you guys at the next video. You know the drill, like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments section down below your thoughts on the market right now. I'll see you at the next one. Have a great weekend. Until then, peace out.